Hello all, I am going to do a video tour of my study again. I've added some books, I think the other day, and I put up some new pictures and stuff. So, I'm gonna show it to you. I'm just give like a quick circular tour here. I got Calvin and Knox, Spurgeon and Murray. That's been there, that's been there. Let's see if this helps any with the glare. Can't see those very well. That is uh, Ordination of Elders in the Scottish Kirk. That's the Disruption Assembly. And then that is the Senate of Dort. You look real close, you may not be able to see it, but it says the Senator Dort there in Dutch. Um, it's a picture I've had, a clock, got it working. A few things organized like that. So we're gonna start over here. I've rearranged a few things as well. Starting here, we have sermons. Sermons are on this top shelf. So we have Alexander McLaren's Exposition of Holy Scripture. I've used this a little bit from time to time. It's pretty good. Um, it's almost like a it's almost like a commentary, but he's like preaching through the Bible instead of commenting. So he'll take like a passage here and there and comment on it, but it's definitely not exhaustive like Calvin or Gill would be. So then we have Spurgeon sermons, this little five volume set. Yeah. Luther's complete sermons. Stuff by George Whitfield. This is Annals of the American Pulpit. This is like um, old Southern Baptist preaching. Here's um, some stuff on preaching in general. Then here is sermons. Actually, I need to move this. Probably this as well. Yeah, this is more preaching material. I've moved my actual stuff on sermon prep to another place. So this is Saints, The Saints Happiness by Jeremiah Burroughs. And then these are old Sunday school notes uh, from the Southern Baptist Convention. And these are the dates. Not really looked a lot at these. My dad gave them to me, so have them for now. Coming down, and go to journals. This is the free Presbyterian magazine and monthly record. Uh, you can access this online. I do not have all 150 years. I just have like a first few months from the early 1800s, <clears throat> not 18, late 1800s, the early times of their denomination, which was in 1893 when they were founded. Um, but yeah, it's pretty neat to have. This right here is a little booklet that I put together of just some stuff that I had. <clears throat> Becoming a Churchman. The Presbyterian Reformed Church Constitution, and then the Free Church Continuing Supplement for Study for Students in the Ministry. Um, it's pretty helpful. We are in the PRC, so we have more other journal, uh, more other theological journals. Um, this is the Arbica Journal here, the seminary, and then this is stuff from the Westminster Conference. Then just some pamphlets. This shelf though is mostly experimental religion. Um, there might be some doctrinal stuff mixed in, but it's presented in an experimental manner and helpful for the average Christian. Um, there's some devotionals, also experimental in value. Then my small section of Puritan paperbacks. I'd like to get the whole set to loan to people. I think probably use those would be helpful. Um, I'm just coming on over. And this gets into more experimental religion, I guess, in a more pure form, for lack of a better term. Stuff on uh, the home, Christian home. Um, just killing sin, overcoming flesh, spiritual growth, etc. And then here, this is just some practical meditations on personal godliness and stuff. So that's that shelf. And then... Also, I'm pointing out how this me and my house we will serve the Lord. Quote by Moses, as a Presbyterian home as we are, um, my house is a very important concept in our theology. Being a believing household, 
Um, all right, these are commentaries. I put these in alphabetical order. Um, we got Barnes Notes in the New Testament, Calvin's commentaries. Here we have church bulletins of all the Reformed churches we've been to and our last one we've been to, which has been a while. Um, we've been going there almost a year. It's all the bulletins we have there. I've just kind of collected them and have some sermon notes on them. Uh, we just kind of go back and review from time to time. Um, Adam Clark's commentary, Matthew Henry. This is volume one of Jameson Fawcett Brown. I'd like to get the whole set, just haven't yet. Matthew Poole's commentary, it's very helpful. Vincent Word studies on the New Testament. And then we're moving to single Bible com single book Bible commentaries. I do want to point out my, my favorite commentaries that I have are Matthew Poole, Calvin, and Henry. Uh, I use those probably the most out of everything. Uh, they're very helpful. I also like to use Gill from time to time. One of these days, I'll actually purchase them. Um, Alfred Edersheim on the Old Testament uh, Bible history. I think that just covers the Pentateuch. Um, I've read a good bit of that. Well, maybe a quarter of it. Uh, when I was about 18 or 19, pretty helpful. Um, Charles Bridges on Psalm 119. Treasury of David by Spurgeon. That's his commentary on the Psalms. These are coffee beans, um, obviously. But I put them out partly for smell and also it's supposed to help preserve your books. I found that out by listening to Albert Moeller's library tour video. It's pretty interesting. J.C. Ryle on the Gospels. I have the paperback set. I don't have the hardbacks. Uh, Watson's Beatitudes. This is Benjamin Keach Exposition of the Parables. Had that for a while. Getting to know John's Gospel by Peterson. It's put out by PNR. Anything anything they put out is usually good. It's Presbyterian and Reform Publishing. Romans by one of the Haldane brothers, Robert Haldane. Um, volume one of the volumes of Martin Lord Jones is on Romans. Uh, it's on chapter 13. That was given to me as a gift, along with this book by Haldane. So, just kind of have them. I still plan to get his full set as well. Studies on Romans by Robinson. Uh, this is another, this is by Mole on Romans. Barnhouse on Romans. Calvin Sermons on Galatians. I put it over here because this is, even though these are sermons, these are more commentary based sermons I guess and I have all if you haven't noticed I have this all in like um canonical order pink on Hebrews James Haldane on Hebrews victory in Jesus by uh, Jeffrey Johnson's father this is a devotional commentary on the book of Revelation and then behold he cometh by Herman Hoeksema it's an Amil uh position um read a little bit of it not a whole lot but it's nice to have when i lean more on mail i've used this more um these are my salter section all three salters that i have I plan to get more at some point um then we get down here it just gets down to biographies i have a book on coin collecting i have a very very small coin collection these are harry truman's memoirs i've not read them but they're neat to have I'll read them one day, maybe, or someone else will. I got a lot of this stuff for free, so. Some of these things we just had from childhood that I just kept. And these are like older books here that I don't really use. I just want to keep to collect. Coming down here, I actually need to come down this side. Do we get into more history? That shelf is mostly biography and literature. This is history, stuff on World War II. In a little bit in the Civil War, um, the early American Republic, Revolutionary War. This is about women's right to vote. My dad borrowed that from someone, never returned it, and I have it today. Um, some stuff on our Constitution, then a few other books on the state of Alabama and then other nations around the world. So that's that shelf. Um, all right, then I have this shelf here. I don't really have anything on it much other than a few magazines. Um, as my library grows, I'll probably utilize it more. Also, this is very helpful. Let me point this out real quick. 
This is Robert Murray McShane's Read Your Bible in a Year calendar of daily Bible reading. You can get this from Banner of Truth for like 20 cents, I believe. But it has a calendar of like, uh, this is like February 1st. So you read on the 1st, you read this. You read some with your family, some, with your, some in private. This is supposed to be morning, morning, and then evening and evening. I kind of read it all at once. Um, we'll use it some in family worship. We just kind of vary. It's not like set in stone that you have to um, do it that way, but it's always an option. Down here we have reference books. Just kind of go through slowly to let everybody see. It's the top shelf and then here on the bottom shelf. Oh, whoops. These are neat. I'm really fascinated with church denominations and divisions and their history. So picked these books up when I was in high school, probably. Uh, it's just History of the Denomination of the United States and then the Small Sects in America. This focuses more on just very small churches that we may not have heard of and small denominations. It's pretty neat. This, this tends to focus more mainline. Technically, this would be a commentary. I just haven't worked it into my commentary section yet. And this is a dictionary of the New Testament. Um, I've not really used it a whole lot. Essentially, it is what it is. It's a dictionary of the New Testament. So um, it's a little helpful. It comes in handy from time to time. Then we have some older dictionaries. My grandmother gave me these. They're like from the 70s. It's pretty neat. All right, then coming up here to my bigger shelf. <clears throat> all right so i did a little bit of rearranging the other day oh, fix that up there put that like that um i have complete works at the top we're going alphabetical order i've mixed my baptist and presbyterian folks together um for now we may adjust in the future but it's easier like this um Keeps everything more in order with subject matter. So we have the complete works of William Bates, works of Stephen Sharnock, works of Jonathan Edwards, Finley Center on Reformed Theological Writings, works of Andrew Gray, works of Joseph Kinghorn. He was a particular Baptist. Volume 1 of Manton. John Murray, Volume 3 of his collected writings. I plan to get his full writings, just haven't gotten it yet. George Swinnick, Reformed Thought by William Young. Reform Dogmatics by Bavink. That's just the first, that's an abridged one volume set. That's not the full, um, I don't think it's five volume set. I plan to get that as well. Systematic Theology by Burkhoff. Uh, in my previous video, I pointed this out. This is an older uh, edition of Reform Dogmatics by Burkhoff. Uh, it's actually the original edition, from what I gather. It was published in 1937. There's no printing before that. Um, at least it's not recorded in a book. Um, it's pretty neat though. It's nice to have Ben Boyce, he was a Southern Baptist. Abstract of Systematic Theology. John Brown of Haddington, his Systematic Theology. I want to point this out real quick. This, if you're wanting to learn more about Scottish Presbyterian theology, this is, this is the book to get. John Brown of Haddington originally published this as a compendious view of natural and revealed religion. Essentially, it's a systematic theology, but it uh, goes into great depth. It's very helpful. Um, if you notice, there's tons of scriptural citations. Well, maybe not as much there. You'll notice I'll put you right there. That's a little bit. There's some places where it's like entire paragraphs of just scriptural citations to back up what he's saying. Very helpful. Um, that's the table of contents, but it's pretty helpful. If anybody's getting into Presbyterian theology and Scottish Presbyterian theology, it's a good place to uh, go. It's a good place to read. I got that from Reformation Heritage Books. I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks, so it was a pretty good investment. Two volumes of Calvin's Institutes. This is the original edition, and then this is uh, one later in, from his life. I'm still reading through that one. William Cunningham, Introduction to Theological Studies. That's pretty nice to have. Um, this is published. Uh, who published this? Someone in the Free Church of Scotland published this. 
available from a press. There it is. Okay, some place in Greenville. Never mind, I was wrong. All right, anyways, moving down. <clears throat> we stay with the systematic theologies, and we're, we're still in alphabetical order. So this is John Dagg. He was a particular, actually, he was like a um, regular Baptist, which turned into the SBC. The SBC claims him, which is fine. Um, Gill, Body of Divinity. I love Gill. I'm a Presbyterian, but he's wonderful to read. Um, he gets a little hyper at times, but it's it's a wonderful, um, wonderful book to have. He wrote that in his 20s. And if you read that in the depth of it, mean, it's a thousand pages almost. I mean, he's, just, he's highly intelligent. It's really neat to read. Systematic Theology by Hodge classic American Presbyterian to have. Reformed Dogmatics by G.H. Kirsten. I've looked through a little bit of that. I've read his section on reprobation. Just kind of curious to see his thoughts on that. I've not really dug into that a whole lot, but it's pretty helpful. Body of Divinity by Thomas Watson. I've read that cover to cover a few times. Um, probably read this twice, actually. Um, I read that when I was probably 15 years old. Um, then I read it again once we left fundamentalism and ended up more reformed. Herman Davitsius' Economy of the Covenants, excellent addition to have, excellent works to have for covenant theology. Um, I'd recommend that to anyone. That's a standard text. I've read both of those. They're wonderful. Uh, Richard Barsalis' Family Tree of Biblical Theology, some Reformed Baptist stuff. So we're kind of getting into covenant theology at this point. Um, just kind of put this here. That's Lorraine Bettner. Seed of Abraham by Piders. Uh, he was, in, I think, in the Reformed Church of America back in the 20s, maybe. I, I may be wrong, but someone wants to correct me. That's fine. This is just some Baptist stuff as well. And this is King, uh, Joseph Kingdom's Children of Abraham's. It's a particular Baptist covenant theology. Um, I have read that all the way through, and I am not a particular Baptist. So if anyone says that you have to read that in order to be a particular Baptist and everyone's a particular Baptist after you read that, it's not completely accurate because I'm not. But anyways, that's a side note. Um, Heaven Open, Riches of the Covenant of Grace by Richard Allen. Haven't read it, but I got it the other day when I got um, a bunch of books. Pretty nice to have. And coming over here, we start with Theology Proper, The Doctrine of God. I'm just going to kind of go through slowly. It's a neat book to have. Uh, Absolute Predestination by Z Jerome Zakinas. Probably mispronounced his name, but it's put out by Free Grace Press. It's in Arkansas. You can look that up online. It's a pretty cheap book. That was given to me for free by Jeffrey Johnson. Thank you if you're watching. Um, just a few more books. This is uh, Studies on Saving Faith by Pink. So, all right, so I need, need to specify here. Theology proper, pneumatology. Then we get into the Doctrine of Salvation, which needs to go there. Sorry, I'm very anal about things. Um, election and predestination are together. Grace. Uh, salvation by grace, salvation. And then we get into the atonement, the cross. Atonement all the way to here. Then we have faith. Then we get into, this is just more or less uh, the doctrine of man in a sense. Uh, this is the dispensation of innocence, more or less here. Human Nature's Fourfold State by Thomas Boss. I'm still reading that. Excellent book to have. Pink on man's depravity. And then coming down here. Justification, and this is the Visible Church and the Outer Darkness by Richard Bacon. This gets into more um, ecclesiology, to about right here, and then I probably need to move a few things, but um, yeah, I just realized this is out of order. This is more or less mixed in right now, ecclesiology and sacramentology all together. So, I mean, I have, like, Dags, a particular Baptist. I have him mixed in. 
Jeffrey Johnson's Fatal Flaw of Infant Baptism right next to Willison's Sacramental Catechism arguing for infant baptism and he's arguing against it. I don't really have them there for any particular reason. It's just how it worked out. There's a few things I have on like inspiration, preservation, and biblical stuff. Uh, Edward Hills, this is a pretty good book. It was not originally called this. Um, I'm not King James only. Um, for lack of a better term, I hold the confessional text position. Um, if you want to figure out more about that, look up Agris Church on um, YouTube and you can find stuff about it. Uh, Dane and them do a very lengthy, detailed explanation of all that. Um, here's my section on Calvinism. Calls of God and Truth by Gill. That's his work on defending Calvinism against an Arminian. It's a pretty good book. Um, what's neat about it in here, he cites the church fathers at the end, supporting uh, some of the five points. It's pretty neat. Ian Murray, Spurgeon versus Hyper-Calvinism. Clark Van Til controversy. I tend to be a little bit more Clarkian. And then, this is an neat book to have. Um, I mean, it's denying the Wellman offer. I wouldn't deny it. I'd affirm the free offer of the gospel. Uh, just It's just a book that I was given. It's nice to have. Uh, Joseph Hussey, he was one of the first people that argued against the free offer of the gospel. Here's my section on eschatology. I'm post-millennialism, or I'm post-mill, so there's a few things I have. <clears throat> Here is my Bible that I read. It is a... Cambridge, Concord Wide Margin. Had it for a few years. Got this in 2011, and it's 2020 now. So I've almost been using it for 10 years, and it's in very good shape. I mean, you can see there's a little bit of um, wear on the pages, but it's held together very nicely. Small little booklet on the... Westminster Shorter Catechism is all it is. It's just a catechism. This is my wife's Bible. Cambridge as well. Plan to get some Trinitarian Bible Society Bibles. He's haven't got them yet. Then up here we have Confessions of Faith. It's Reformed Confessions Harmonized. Uh, West, the Westminster Confession of Faith. It's a nice addition to pick up. It's put out by Free Presbyterian Publications. Um, as far as I can tell, I would subscribe fully to the Westminster Standards. Um, book by William uh, Benjamin Warfield, Westminster Assembly and his work. Hodges, um, commentary on the Westminster Confession, then some stuff by G.I. Williamson on it. Our um, Christian Ed class at church has been going through the Westminster Shorter Catechism or memorizing it and learning a little bit. Once we're out of quarantine, we're not making this during the COVID-19 um, quarantine, so it's fun. Once we're out of quarantine and we're back to worshiping again in public, uh, we'll be back on that most likely. Um, just some more stuff on the Dutch standards, three forms of unity. This is the Peace of USA Book of Confessions. I just kept it. Um, some Baptist stuff here. Commentary on the 1689 Confession. Hercules Collins, Orthodox Catechism. This is a book pu pu published by Reformed Baptist Publications. Or, I'm sorry, Reformed Baptist Academic Press. This is on, what is this actually? This is a toolkit for confessions. It explains how the particular Baptists use their confessions and what they meant and how they subscribed and so on. It's pretty helpful. And it explains what particular Baptists today, mainly Reformed Baptists, how they should use them. It's pretty neat. I've read most of it. Um, James Renahan wrote that, I believe. And he did a... If you look up James Renahan Confessionalism on Sermon Audio, essentially the text of that is in a presentation form. So it's like he reads it about an hour. It's pretty nice. Fundamentals, have that, that set of books, I've had those for a while. Um, it's helpful, they have some good stuff in them. Some stuff maybe not so good, but I have them. Uh, Watson's Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer. 
as my library grows, I plan to get more stuff on the Ten Commandments and more stuff on the Lord's Prayer, and that will be those sections, and I'll probably have to be moved, but have them together for now. <clears throat> Just a random shelf that I keep random things on. Here we get into biographies. So we start with biographies of biblical characters. So Christ, Paul, and this is uh, just a combination of a few. Uh, McCartney, Elijah and Elisha. Then we have some stuff on the temple by Alfred Edersha. Um, I have, once I get more stuff, um, like we plan to get like the Ark of the Covenant open and stuff like that. This would be the section I'm going to put this in. Just random Old Testament or New Testament biblical subjects written on in particular. I have this book. Not really used it or care, but it takes up space. So it's here for now anyways. Now we get into more Christian biographies. Just kind of a hodgepodge of stuff. Some letters by Elizabeth Elliot, stuff on Billy Graham. I read this when I was a kid, Torture for His Faith by Harlan Popov. He was a Christian in Bulgaria. He was uh, taken to a prison camp, essentially, and tortured for being a Christian. It's pretty interesting. Over here, we get into more uh, Reformed folks and their commentaries, and then Luther. For my Lutheran friends that don't want to say Luther's Reformed, I singled it out. You're welcome. Um, here's just some stuff about books. Life of John Gill. Days of Our Father in Rothschild. Asa Hell Nettleton. Then, this is a pretty nice book here. I've not really looked into it a whole lot, but I'd like to get more of his stuff on the Reformers and the Theology of Reformation by William Cunningham. He was a professor at the Free Church Seminary, or college, I guess, back in the day when the, in 1843 when the disruption happened. He was one of the, from one that came out from the disruption. Book on the Covenanters, Reformed Orthodoxy in Scotland. And here's my two sections, which I need to add that lectures from my, to my students by Spurgeon too. But this is my section on preaching. Have preparation and delivery of sermons by John Broadus. And then Preaching for the Types of Metaphors by Benjamin Keach. It is ironic. I have two books on preaching, or three books on preaching, and they're all by Baptists. Plan to get more at some point. Just haven't yet. We're down here. Hopefully you can see it okay. Turn this other one up. I don't know if it'll help. Sorry, bear with me. Down here is Apologetics. Just kind of mixed in. Got MacArthur's Strange Fire. It's helpful. I got that the other day. My dad gave it to me. Got some stuff by um, Francis Schaeffer as well. Yeah, that's that section. I've not really read much in it. it it's neat to have. Then here's where I have a few high school yearbooks and then my Bibles. I'd like to get an original 1611 and a Geneva Bible and the Reformation Heritage Study Bible. Probably get that hardback. And then the TBS um, Study Bible. I can't remember what, what it is right now off the top of my head, but I'd like to get that as well. And, maybe, and then this is an NIV. Maybe at some point an ESV and a few others, but I don't really use those. I use the King James for the most part. Down here, got a section on logic, and these are just kind of books that for general interest. My wife likes horses, stuff on horses, always like sheep. And my dad used to keep bees, hence why I have a book on beekeeping. Um, so I've got training pointers, some journals. I have some stuff on fly fishing and fly tying. I used to tie flies when I was younger. Stuff on roses, American Standard of Perfection. This is pretty cool. I used to keep poultry and I'd like to keep some more of it at some point. Um, it is like if you show birds, that's what they look for. It's pretty neat to have. There's stuff over there, stuff in sports. But that's pretty much my library. Um, 
the clock's chiming. But there's that picture. My wife's aunt made that American flag picture. It's pretty neat. So that stuff, these are recent additions to my study. So, yep, the end. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.